Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Dork Side of the Ring podcast. I am your host, the purveyor of all things dorky within the scope of professional wrestling and sports entertainment. I am Grum. Hello. And uh, doing good on a fine, beautiful day here inside the car of mine while I record this at work uh, so that I can do a good job of doing things. Uh, yeah, we're, 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 you know. Uh, it's a good day. I don't, I don't, it's uh, sunny, you know, pollen in the air. My sinuses are having a doozy of a time. But I want you to know uh, that I appreciate you guys checking us out yet again, joining us for another episode. Uh, this week's episode is a lot, a lot lighter, a lot more fun than last week's episode. Uh, which, uh, yeah, if you listen to it and uh, we're as disgusted as anybody uh, should be at what, uh, at the whole Katie Vick idea. Um, yeah. Uh, welcome to being a sane and rational person. Um, but, uh, yeah, this week we got a fun one. We got Santino Morella's debut. Uh, WWE was in Milan, Italy for a European tour for first ever raw from Italy. Uh, and, uh, they kick off the show with Vince. We'll get into it. They, but Santino Morella makes his debut, winning the Intercontinental Championship. A top, I think I said last week, I think it was the best. I think it's like a top three debut. Um, I think I would put Santino up there. I would put Kane's up there. Kane debuted and it was ridiculous. And, um, you know, uh, I would probably, eh, it's tough. It's tough because, like, you know, there's, like, there, there's there's debuts that really stick out. But you, in hindsight, they're not really, you know, there. Um, and, like, I think of debuts as, like, a shocking debut. Like, I, I don't think I don't think it's fair to compare, like, the debut of, like, Razor Ramon or Kurt Henning, who had weeks of buildup uh, to the, um, to, to like the shock and awe type of uh, debut of like a Kane or Santino Morella. Um, but yeah, those two are definitely top two. Um, I got to think about the third because my brain, I, my brain's not coming up with it right now, but that's cause you know, I'm at work right now. So my brain is, uh, not really firing on all, all, all cylinders there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this week's episode, we got CJ, we got Cornman from the CPFs. We're talking, um, talking Santino Morello's debut. We talk a little bit about Gable Stevenson as a wrestler, because as a human, he is garbage. I mean, when you literally get off on a technicality so bad that the government literally changes the law almost immediately after, um, you're, you you get off on that technicality. That's not good, um, but uh, you know we, we have a we have a fun chat. So the the vibes are on the up after last week's episode of 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 the from the Katie Vick. The vibes aren't like down. It's not like we. It was a. I, I love that episode. It was a good episode. It was something where I wanted to talk this. To, I wanted to talk about Katie Vick. I wanted to show somebody it. It is utterly. Uh, it is one, like I, like I said, I think it's the most tasteless thing that we are going to cover on the dork side of the ring. I'm confident in saying that because I don't know if blackface or other, um, problematic things that WWE will put out, like, uh, Santino was involved in, a, 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 I like a, another, it wasn't, I, don't, I feel like it wasn't, but it, yeah. Santino Morella was kind of, um, uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is, but hey, look. Um, it's a fun, fun episode this week. This week's episode is, so we'll get to that. Me, CJ Cornman talking about the Milan miracle himself, Santino Morella's debut 15 years ago today, the 18th, uh, 15 years ago. Uh, shout out me for getting the date down perfectly between, uh, recording yesterday and recording today. Shout out me, uh, 18, 15 years on the 18th, starting now. Okay, well, hey, you know what? CJ and Cornman work together, so that's good. Let's get yeah. them together. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, I just spoiled the guess, although I guess, you know, if, if people are reading the, the description, 
uh, in this little preamble part. They figure out who I've got on. But, uh, yeah, we've got uh, my two friends from the CPFs, close personal friends. Uh, uh, yeah, we just I was like, can I figure out a different F? And I can't. Um, <laughs> so uh, we've got – let me just get the – I because I do these in alphabetical order. We got CJ. Yeah, what's up, man? And we got Corn Man. Hey. Good to I didn't see even you. know we started recording yet. Yeah, no, look, I said <laughs> no, I No, I, I kind of picked that up in like the last 30 seconds. I was like, oh, wait, we're, we're yeah. live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, it's good. I I, I did. Uh, look, the, the recording does say I'm going to rec- right, hit record. Uh, but, yep. uh, yeah, no, it's uh, – I, it's it's normally the the preamble part is danger can be dangerous because we could just go off. I've had conversations about how hippos are bad. Um, I think that was with uh, with Max and and Wheezy. We're just talking about how hippos are horrible, horrible. Uh, um, I was gonna say Pokemon because I've just been playing too much of it. Uh, but animals, <laughs> they're horrible animals. Uh, they be great Pokemon, but they're yeah, horrible. They're good animals. Pokemon. Yeah. Horrible animals. They're they're mean. Yeah, I don't think they hella terrible. Don't think they're housebroken either. No, no. And everybody <laughs> would be like, "Oh, they're so cute." And it's like, no, nah, they're not. Like they're cute when they're babies, but they're like, you know, as soon as they like hit puberty, they become these territorial monsters. Yeah, very and, uh, very high maintenance animals. Yeah, you ever see them chase down airboats, <laughs> bro? <laughs> Yeah, I've, I, I've seen videos of that where they're like jumping up and down out of the water like dolphins. Whoa, yeah. they look, it's terrifying. They run God, underwater. Is, they, yeah. <laughs> like full speed underwater because they're yeah, dense that is, enough. It's yeah, no not, thanks. That's no. like a super villain animal that they keep in the death pool to kill the, <laughs> to kill the hero. Like, no. Yeah, f- fuck having laser mounted sharks. Mm-hmm. Just have one hippo, maybe two. One. Two, one. Yeah. yeah. Save, save the cost there on animal stuff. Uh, yeah. But hey, welcome to the dork side, guys. Glad to have you. Hey, hey thanks thank for having us. Yeah, no, man. No problem. So as we do here is every episode, I'll let you guys introduce yourself and, uh, you know, give a little <laughs> bit of your your uh, personality and whatnot to the to the listeners. So we're going to start with you, Corn Man. Uh, oh, wait, no, CJ. Oh, J comes before O. Um, alphabet oh, legend, is, alphabet oh, is whooping my ass. Uh, CJ, we're going to start with you, but uh, tell the people a little <laughs> bit about yourself, where they can find you, and, and the su- and the such. All right. So, yeah, it's me. It's your boy, CJ. Uh, you can find me on the Bird app. I don't know why you're going to be looking for me, but if you do look for me, you can find me on the Bird app at CJ5299. A um, little bit about me. I really don't know much about wrestling whatsoever, so I'm just here to have some fun. Have a good time. Probably have more questions answered than asked. But uh, yeah, well, it's that's what I'm about to do. That's yeah. always good. I like having. I like. Uh, I like having inqui- active guests. You know, you can be active in one of many yeah. ways. The worst yeah. is to be like, I don't know this, but I don't want to know anything about this. Uh, so it's good. Good <laughs> attitude to have. Uh, no, Corman, like four year old. I just ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, Corman, on the other side of the table, you're uh, introduce people a little bit about yourself. Tell them about your. Uh, uh, your your just I guess uh, personality and and such and things and where they can find you. All right, uh, like Grown said, uh, I go by Cornman. You can find me on Twitter uh, at Zach Corneliuson. Uh, I'm not going to spell it, but you can find me um, <laughs> on there. Uh, <laughs> I I could spell it, but like. I'm gonna have to go slow so you can write it down, and we don't we don't need to deal with that. Um, but a little bit about, about my personality. I I like CJ. I don't know a whole lot about professional wrestling, um, but I'm excited to be here uh, on Grum's podcast. Uh, and yeah, I'm I'm excited to just uh, bullshit and talk with the boys. And see what we can get into. Oh yeah, oh yeah, heavy on the bullshit. Heavy. Yeah. Look, that's it's it's honestly the best part about this is um, I've been told by many people has been like just getting people on who aren't wrestling fans and seeing where their brain takes them. Like Grum, explain them something about wrestling. I do that, and then it's like and they're like, all right, but hold on. So you're telling me that this. Is allowed, and it's like not only is it allowed, but <laughs> it's the basis of everything they do. <laughs> like, like you're telling me simple batter- battery is allowed, buddy. Let me tell you something. That's everything. 
<laughs> that's the first charge that if this was a real thing. We got B and E's, we've got uh sexual assault, uh we got oh. like there's a lot in wrestling that is that that in the scope like, you know, it's because it's entertainment, right? So like the idea that mm -hmm. you know, um like it's it's weirdly judged by like <laughs> If people want to hate on it, they hate on it because it's either not actually a sport or not actually a TV show. Like, because it's in this weird middle ground yeah. of, like, it's athletic performative theater. And I've always said that wrestling is the last form of Shakespearean theater. Because <laughs> Shakespearean theater, theater, the stage was on the ground and the people were above it. And they looked down on the play and they watched the play, whereas... You know, and it was like a 360 experience, whereas like nowadays plays are very much, you know, raised up and, you know, you, you know, the audience has to look up to see the performance or, you know, at best they're eye to eye with the performance. Um, yeah. That and, is a beautiful analogy. Yeah. And like, I've always said that I've always said that Hamlet needed a tables and chairs match. It, it really oh, did. You know, <laughs> that's the one missing piece. Get the cage out there, baby. Yeah, if you, I'm telling you right now, if you had a um, you know, a war games match between the uh, the Romeo's family and and Juliet's family, both of them may be still alive. You know, like yeah. you nope. know, the weird sisters out there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Montagues and uh, I forget what the other the one. What, Capulets. Capulets. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I only know the Montagues because I had a friend in high school whose last name was Montague. And oh. everybody says like, <gasps> "You're related." A direct, yeah. a direct descendant. <laughs> And he's like, Err. so like the whole thing was, he's like, yeah, I make sure, like, he, you know, he leaned into it. He was like, yeah, no, like, you know, the um, the Capulets, and I couldn't remember what they were, but like, he's like, made sure that they, there is no more of them, because like people are like, well, where's the where's the other half? Uh, oh. That'd have been funny if you had a uh, <laughs> student in your school with the last name of Capulet as well. Yeah, right. Like oh, they'd yeah. have to be like a, they, an they organic have, rivalry. They yeah. either have to be rivals or lovers, one of the two. That, um, oh yeah it's no true. in between you couldn't be indifferent yeah. to that go person. rivals two lover <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah i have no feelings either way about that capulet kid <laughs> it's like not allowed your, your name's Montague. you have to have a feeling you're like I, i've never i don't know that i don't know him uh but yeah all right so so we jumped ahead a little bit because normally i like to ask about la you know intro you know experience or lack thereof but um in the, in place of it like i'm sure i know i know that uh you guys have occasionally jumped in when i show some wrestling in the cord. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Which I don't, I don't, this will probably have come out well after it, but I'm, I'm doing mania in my cord both Saturday and Sunday this year, uh, which is the, this coming Saturday and Sunday a week from now as we're recording it. Um, but uh, have you guys ever found yourself playing like the wrestling video games? Cause I feel like a lot of people are like, no, I never really watch wrestling, but I did play the video games cause yeah, they're, they're like dumb, you know? <laughs> There, yeah, that a... was, sorry, that was, uh, so I, when I grew up, I started wrestling at, like, age four, mm. like, I was in junior wrestling and all that, and so when I heard wrestling or professional wrestling, I was like, this is bullshit, that's not professional wrestling, <laughs> like, this is something completely different. Uh, so like I, yeah, I was kind of like, uh, for a while on like the, yeah, this, this is bullshit. This is not real wrestling. Uh, and as I grew up, you know, I had friends that had the professional wrestling games and stuff like that. And so we would play Royal Rumbles and we would mess around and do all that. Um, but never really got into like watching it, uh, or like, uh, following the characters or the storylines at all. Um, but as I've been in the, in the discord and seen you and Jim Jam and all the guys that are, uh, producing great wrestling content, uh, <laughs> it's, it's piqued my interest. And also with my boy, Gable Stevenson, maybe coming into the WWE in the future, uh, mm -hmm. I'll have to stay tapped into to his career and see how he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got, and I find it's funny, like. Like three of the greatest wrestlers to go through Minnesota, like the University of Minnesota, are all pro wrestlers. Mm -hmm. like, pro Gophers. Yeah, <laughs> you got you got Gable, you got Brock, and you got yep. Shelton Benjamin. Um, who it was it was pretty cool to hear him get shouted out uh, during the 
during the championship match uh, for Gable. They're like, yeah, like he's going to follow in the footsteps of Brock Lesnar and Shelton Benjamin and, and head, head into, into pro wrestling when he's done. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Shelton Benjamin was a fucking problem. Like, you know, he just so, ha- he just so happened to be on the same team as fuck and same weight as Brock Lesnar. Like, that's unfair to him. Uh, yeah. It's just wild that Brock Lesnar is – they don't – I mean, it makes sense, but wrestling is like, yeah, heavyweight is anything over this weight. It's like what if there's a inhuman 400-pound man uh, who is who moves like a fucking Ferrari? He's a heavyweight. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Uh, uh, oh, well, my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> be, be well. I got nothing for you. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, just hope that he only stays for two years instead of four. Uh, yeah. CJ, CJ, what about you? Any any experiences with uh, the pro wrestling uh, video games? A cu- a little bit. Like okay. uh, I would go to my cousin's house, and he had the game, but I didn't have it. So I would just go over there to play it, and, and you know, just bullshit, have some fun over there every now and again. That's how that was my experience with it. And I watched a little bit of wrestling at his house. Never knew what the hell is really going on. I just mm. remember laughing at Teddy Long a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, Long, Teddy Long Teddy uh, Long if I could I would simply just do an entire episode where I show somebody a compilation of him saying now hold on playa um, yeah. <laughs> because like and not like the Twitter version where it's like a two minute like hold on playa no like I'm talking 20 minutes 20 minutes of him walking out the five seconds before and then him coming hold on now playa I, I hear you but you're gonna go one on one with Don to take it tonight or you're in a tag team match uh, you know, shit like that. Uh, because you know, there's a reason why he's a Hall of Fame uh me- member of the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, but yeah, Teddy Long is just great. Uh, I think there's a lot of like early 2000s wrestling gets brought up on Twitter in the most out of nowhere way. Like sometimes I'll just see Teddy Long on a hold on now play underneath the most vile like tweet involving yes, somebody. Yes, yes. Like he's just like hold on now play. It's like wait, I'm oh, like I've seen the version of, like the, the the evolution of that is now where it'll be like, um, you know, <laughs> like oh like now you're going on one on one with the Undertaker. Like it's not it's yeah. not just the na- just, hold on just for the post. <laughs> just for the post, you're going on one on one with the Undertaker. Um, yeah. Why, and also the fact that the Undertaker kidnapped him one time and put him in the back of a hearse and said, uh, "We're too Teddy." Uh, it's it's not a, it's not long enough for a full episode, but maybe like a a short episode in the future. Um, but yeah, so That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Undertaker ki- has many times kidnapped people uh, um, and offered them. As, sometimes would offer them as a sacrifice on a not t- a totally not satanic symbol. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's not just a name, guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. He, uh, I talked about a, little, uh, a couple episodes ago where, like, The Undertaker, his evolution from being an actual dead man to like a satanic cult leader to being a member of a corporate cult and then to a bike riding, t- you know, chew spitting, you know, redneck back to being a dead man. Um, it's just a wild ride. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, we've got Corman, who is a, div- who is a reformed, uh, wrestling, wrestling purist. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I know so many people that were like that, where I'm like, yeah, I like watching wrestling. They're like, that shit's fake. That's not real. <laughs> what I do is oh. real wrestling. And it's like, <laughs> well, I can just, I can just imagine like middle school Corman saying, oh, come on, man. Where, where are the fundamentals at in this guy? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he's not even doing a single leg. How do you score points? Um, yeah. I had a I had a friend in 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 high school. He uh he was really good uh all district um senior year. And I remember for senior night, we had res- we had a like it was a conference a conference match and they uh they were they were a pretty all right team. They had a guy in his weight class who was going to think he was 185. Yeah, cuz I wrestled one year and he was the same weight class as me. Um mm-hmm. And he teched the guy on senior night, and the other guy was like, actually, it was also very good, but he teched the guy, which Ooh. I believe is what fifteen points you guys score if, on a guy. Yeah, yeah. You're, if you're up by fifteen, they'll they'll call that as yeah, a match. He, he so Whoa. he basically yeah he basically did he did his, uh, takedown for for uh, two, two points. points yeah. He get the back for three, and then let the guy up, and then just kept doing yeah. that and doing that. Teched him in like the second <laughs> round, <laughs> like. He just he like had his way with this guy, and it was just like, 
wow, that's amazing to see. But he was one of those guys who at the time, you know, a couple years prior was like, wrestling's fucking fake. Like, that's not, that's not cool. <laughs> what I do is cool. And it's just like, bro, like, wrestling's fun. Like, just have theme music. Like, you, you come out to theme music, you whoop on a guy and you talk your shit. Why don't you like wrestling? Like, what, what about it? Yeah. Is, it the, is it the fact that they don't do single leg takedowns? Like, I'm confused. They ruined yeah, the game. I- I think I think it was just the like the professional tag on it mm. was the oh. part that I was hung up on was just like no like if you're good enough at wrestling to go quote unquote professional like you're going to the Olympics yeah you know, like that that is professional wrestling uh, at least that's that was my old uh, thought my process. old world view of it yeah mm. my old thought process. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's not the same thing at all. Like it's mm. it's completely different. Um, just uses the name wrestling as the you know the martial act. Mm-hmm. You're in there. Uh, do yeah, like you said, like it's physical theater, it's athletic theater, uh, and that's awesome. Like that deserves to be appreciated for what it is. Yeah, but also they're a bunch of punks that they couldn't they couldn't lace up they couldn't lace up Gable Stevenson's not uh, a shoes chance. not a chance not a chance not a chance. Um, but it's funny. I mean, there's a lot of I mean, Dolph Ziggler, uh, NCAA champ or not NCAA champion. He had the most at when he retired, and for a while I think he had the most wins in the heavyweight division at Kent State. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of oh, it's a lot. There's a lot of like, especially in the mid two thousands, like. Towards the end of Jim Ross's like time as being the head of talent relations, he was like actively recruiting like former athletes, and they still do to because it's like, hey, well, you're already fit- like athletes in general are physically imposing. Like, mm-hmm. look at uh, look at like Joe Thomas right now. Is we just thought of Joe Thomas, former left tackle for the uh, for the Browns, as this fat, ugly guy. Now it's like, wow, he's really good looking. Also, he's fucking huge. Like, god damn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he's six eight two sixty five of fucking twisted steel and sex appeal. Wow, and he's just this fat guy because he had to be fat for pro wrestling. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. if, you, if you make them not have to be in the in the football for you know thirteen years, um, you do pretty good for yourself in pro wrestling. Yeah, just off of sheer size. Um, currently, what is it? Wow. Uh, almost uh, used to play at Central Florida, Jordan. Uh, I forget how to, how to pronounce his last name. He used to play for Southern Florida, I believe. Um, Jordan, uh, uh, I'm gonna butcher this, and I, and I really don't want to, but um, Amag Behin, uh, played for US USF in Morgan State, and he's like six. He's he's <laughs> not six, seven three, four hundred pounds. He's very tall. He's a big man, and uh, they just like, hey, yeah, you you can't. You can't train somebody to be this fucking physically imposing, um, which is going to be interesting with Gable Stevenson because like he doesn't look big for a heavyweight. No, no, he really doesn't. Like even you look at that that championship match that he just had in the NCAA tournament, mm-hmm. uh, and that, yeah, the guy he wrestled is like clearly bigger than him by I, I think it, they weighed in about 20 pounds difference and it looked like it probably could have been like 40 it was mm-hmm. pretty uh pretty substantial yeah he's only like 6'1 to I mean oh I say only like he's 6'1 like 260 but for or 250 but for heavyweight like I think in in the NCAA you can go up to 285 so yeah. he's potentially wrestling guys you know 40 30 40 pounds heavier than him so that's doesn't sound like a lot when you're that big, but when you got a guy like that laying on top of you or putting pressure on you, you feel that. Yeah. yeah. Your lungs feel it too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he lucks out that, like, wrestling nowadays isn't, like, the the average, like, wrestler in WB is probably closer to, like, 6'3 than they are 6'5. Mm-hmm. So he's not going to look as, sh- like, Big E's. I think six foot even. Roman Reigns is six three. Brock Lesnar six two. Like he he stands and he's Gable's Gable's also thick as fuck. Like he's he's yeah. fucking ripped and athletic. I think it'll be just fine. But like ten years ago or so, he'd be like, like wow, he's short. 
It's just like he he's yeah. looking up at John Cena and Randy Orton, and that's not so much that required anymore because you know the idea of being that tall doesn't equal being very good. Like there's, um, you know, Randy Orton's great at being six six, um, but most guys who are like in that weird like I'm just tall, they're like I'm just tall, I'm gonna be fine. It's like no, you gotta do a little bit more than that. It's like uh, it's like three and D basketball, you know. Like, sure, you can shoot a three, and sure, you can play defense, but I need you to do something other than just being six eight uh, on the and sitting in the corner, Danny Green. Ah, uh, what? Uh, well, I didn't want to go after my boy <laughs> Tobias. I, Danny I, Green I, shot. I just, I just, you know, I, I just, you know, I like Danny Green. He's great and all, but uh. I've taken my shots at him too. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. He, he comes back and then he goes away, and then he comes back and then he goes away. That leads me to my question. Yeah, it leads me leads me to my question though. Um, if and I, we always see this on on Twitter on the Bird app. Uh huh. Pick a sport. So for well, CJ, pick a sport. Like a sport you think you're good at, I should say. The uh, okay, let's just go with least terrible. So basketball. <laughs> basketball corn. Uh, softball. I'll, okay, I'll softball. Say that's a... All right. Okay. All right. So, um, tomorrow you are sitting in front row at your fa- at your you know CJ basketball and corn softball mm-hmm. game, sitting there, and they come up to you. the The commissioner says to you, "Hey, get in there. Go ahead." Do you think realistically? Okay. That you would not embarrass yourself. Like that's the bar. Is to not be- oh. embarrass yourself. No, okay. I'm, I'm embarrassed. Oh no, myself. I'm yeah. yeah. I'm bringing going to embarrass myself. Okay, so you you know, you think you, you like even you, we're not staying ready at that point. We're going to have a good time and uh, like they're providing you with like you know like hey, what size shoes are you? What size cleats? You know, we'll get you into we'll get you in the proper gear. Like you don't have to take the floor or the field in jeans or khaki shorts. Um, you know, you get the proper your proper wear. You know, you don't you don't think body. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I'll physically look less out of place if I'm in full uniform, but I think that just is going to make my performance more embarrassing. Yeah, like if I if I go out, Jenny Finch is pitching to me. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm standing there. It's three pitches and I'm out. I'm not. <laughs> there's no debating about that. No, yeah, but if I'm in if I'm in in my shorts and a, a t-shirt, I'm at least gonna have an excuse. Like I don't belong out here. <laughs> like you know, I'm gonna say you know it's fine. I don't belong out here. You know, what, I'll take that. You know, I'll I'll take the gear after the game. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. If no, if I'm out there full uniform, batting helmet, I got eye black on. I'm still seeing three pitches. There's no chance that. Yeah. I are you swing? Are you swinging on all three? <laughs> I think I. I yeah, go down swinging, bro. Fuck it. I, yeah, yeah okay. I, I can't. They're going to be strikes. I can't yeah. just go out there and and not swing at them, but I'm not going to hit them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, listen. The the euphoria of like of my dad seeing me playing an NBA game is going to wear off within 30 seconds of me bringing <laughs> shame to the family name. When George and Yang takes me off the dribble every time. <laughs> <laughs> just barbecue chicken. <laughs> and you know what's worse though? <laughs> I didn't know this. Like, I just like, for some reason I always thought Georges Niang was international just because he went by Georges. I'm like, that's a French ass name. Like the fuck, like you know, find out he's from fucking like the New England, <laughs> and he just talks. Oh, yeah. He just Straight talks. Iowa State. St- talks nothing but <laughs> cash shit to people, even though he's a bench warmer. And it's like, <laughs> I'm like, I like it. I like the energy. I like it. I appreciate yeah. it. You know. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> you know, he's just gonna be like, who, what you do? Just get off the, off the, you know, first round. And you're like, yes, I yes. did. Mr. Niang. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I, I don't know. There's, it's always funny. I don't, you guys see the video of Devin Booker telling the guy to shut the fuck up. Yep. Oh yes. It was great. <laughs> like, it was great. <laughs> there was a, well, yeah, that, that was in Minnesota, I believe. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. He was, uh, he was, he was. Given he was getting the what for from the fan, and he told the yeah. fan to shut the fuck up. Right <laughs> at, at in the middle of like calling the set play, like he's like, "All right, yeah. B B C C, hey, hey, shut the fuck up." <laughs> yeah. like, went right back to I'm like, God damn, like, you yes, know. and then he went right back to doing his job. Like, hey, and then yeah, he's like, "I'm gonna put up some more points." Um, 
No, I went to the Sixers game against Denver uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, mm. Good oh, game. Man. We lost. But uh, there were guys on the opposite of the benches from Denver that were mm-hmm. yelling at the Denver guys the entire game. They are cross-court yelling. I Now, mind you, I'm sitting back behind, uh, like, by the by the Sixers bench. I see the mm-hmm. – I have a clear shot to these guys, and they are just yelling and taunting every dude that is <laughs> – and I'm like, I like, I understand I, – like, I appreciate that. Keep that, that energy, especially after, um, you know, the Nets game where uh, everybody shut the Oof. fuck up. Like, I'm, like, yeah. sitting there like, no, nah, if I paid thousands of dollars to sit courtside to give Ben Simmons – the what for? I'm gonna be giving Ben Simmons the what for until they remove me. Like I don't care. Like, I'm, <laughs> like oh, we're down by forty. I don't care. Like absolutely yeah. not. Same idea when I go to wrestling. It's like I paid to have a good time. I'm gonna have a good time. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't think I. But yeah, I. I don't think I could maybe. I could maybe not trip over my own feet, as like Danny Green crosses me the fuck up. I could probably I could take a charge, possibly. Maybe, yeah. I don't I know if I charge. want to though. I don't know if I want to. I feel, I feel I feel like I think I'd take a charge and then right before I commit, I'm just like eh, and then like get out the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I um, think just the way that the just the velocity, the the violent collision that would occur if I try to take a charge, I think I could maybe draw a foul just by how far my body flies yeah. after the contact. Yeah. And then, like the ref, the ref like, there is something that just happened there. I'm going to call a foul. Then once the ref calls it a blocking foul, I'm going full miles <laughs> of the palace. I don't know. If like, that's, that's the whole yeah. reason I'm out here. And you're calling that blocking? No. No. Nah, the fuck I, up, Scott Foster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, like, I'd sacrifice never being able to go to a, to a, a basketball game ever again <laughs> if I got to throw hands on, like, Scott Foster. <laughs> like, like, yeah, no, like. I, that's the dream of, I feel like, every fan, right? It's not to get yeah. on the court. It's to get on the court and get a bullshit call so that they go, I'm never doing this again. Fuck this, and I'm going to just start throwing hands like yeah. with, the, with, the, with the referees. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not throwing hands with any basketball player or any professional athlete. Nah. I don't care if they don't nah. want to fight. They absolutely would not want to nope. get knocked out by a nobody. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I mean, fuck, we saw how uh, Isaiah Stewart reacted this season when he got... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could not that man could not be stopped. He wanted to. He had blood in his. He saw blood, both literally, literally. and figuratively. Oh, listen, man. He he was stampeding, dog. That was like cruel, it's also cruel intentions. Also, it's just wild how that was this year. Like, yeah, that yeah. It feels like I was six just about to say ago. that was yeah that that feels like a long time ago. Also, like it's all it's very funny. I would have forgot about it if not for Jimmy Butler yelling at his coach and uh, the team mascot of Udonis Haslam. But they all. This is the same same year that the Heat waited outside the Nuggets locker room. And oh, just, buddy! Like, like how far how far has time changed? Where they were like, we're gonna fight as a phone. team, and now we're fighting as a, and now we're fighting each other. <laughs> I still got the picture of my phone. It's fucking hilarious, man. Oh, they're just all posted like, up. Great... Like, Excuse me, I want to go. I want to go in front of the big sixty-year-old man who's just like, "Brother, <laughs> please, please, <laughs> guys, I'm just trying." I look, guys, I just want to go home. You guys are making it harder for me to go the fuck. <laughs> it's meatloaf knife. Come on, yeah. Man. Lois is at home, and I know, I know that house smells so good, and uh, you know yeah. she's gonna expect something, and I'm gonna be too tired to do it. <laughs> Yeah, just imagine that you're you're a locker room security guard. You have to deal with, you know, at worst, most nights, like a drunk fan that somehow gets down there and wants to get in the <laughs> locker room. You open up that door and Bam Adebayo is standing there right in your face. <laughs> I'm shutting the door. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't get paid enough for this. It's the you hear there, Jimmy Butler know. clapping down Settle the hallway. Like <laughs> what? Come on, man. Yeah. You you just hear Adonis Haslam's uh just cricky old knees cracking as he's walking. <laughs> That's the horror. Right? It's not Bam out of bio. It's not Jimmy Butler. It's Udonis Haslam's knees. Like yes, the knees that have nothing left to lose. Got... <laughs> there's there's being on your last legs 
And then there's your last legs being on their last legs, and that's where Udonis has them at this point. I hope I hope Crawford or A Trade don't hear this and get mad at me because they should be like, you uh, can't they're see. leaning into the joke they right will. now. Oh, yeah, they I mean, they, yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. Uh, the culture joke. <laughs> the culture. Like I can't. Ah oh, man, that was just wild. Like it, it's just very funny that Spoh's like, what the, you think I'm gonna fucking fight you? You fight? <laughs> like, it's, yeah, and it's just so crazy, you know, because it's not like. It's not like Jimmy Butler has like a reputation of no. of causing no. issues I'm inside standing. of a team before. You know, I'm he's standing. been a few places. Yeah, has has no complaints from any of his former teammates mm-hmm. or coaches. Nope. Yes, no. Spo has a T'Challa and a Infinity War energy. We, we don't do that here. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. The only again the Got only it? the only people that I that like Jimmy Butler. Are Joel Embiid and Dwayne Wade? That's it. They only played with the guy for a year. Like that's it. Yeah. <laughs> if they, yeah. I'm sure if they played with more, they probably would have hated him. Um, it's just, but, hey, but such is life, man. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah. So all right. So we we're all in agreement. We would all embarrass ourselves. Uh, we could not even mm-hmm. clear the bar, which is good. Yeah. Um. Now but in it, pro, I didn't include pro wrestling in my own scenario. Despite the fact that I think I could do very good if they were like, "Hey, here's your microphone. Don't curse." I'd be like, "I got a, I got, I got a cool thirty seconds in me. Cool, let's do this." Um, I don't, not at all. But mm. I am not Santino Morello. In two thousand six, after um, now former President Donald Trump uh, won his Battle of the Billionaires match against Vince McMahon, where which resulted in Vince McMahon being shaved bald. They went to Italy. The WWE did, and the that's a the, what? Wait, wait. You, that, you said a lot. You said a lot, right? There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, that's for uh, Jim Jam and Pat uh, Duff guy. Pat have that topic uh, this this August for McMahon okay. month. Um, All right. But yes, uh, Donald Trump and Vince McMahon uh, had representatives do battle at WrestleMania 23, and had a nice. A, was that 2000? I guess that's 2007, not 2006. 2007. Um, Vince McMahon's lost. Umaga lost. And as a result, uh, Bobby Lashley, uh, Donald Trump, and Stone Cold Steve Austin shaved Vince McMahon bald uh, on pay-per-view in front of 70,000 people at Ford Field. And as a result, uh, Vince McMahon saw to it that he wanted to make Bobby Lashley be punished, including having a match at Backlash for Bobby Lashley's ECW championship, a three-on-one match <laughs> where it was Vince McMahon, Umaga, and Shane McMahon versus Bobby Lashley. And in the lead-up, the WWE went to Italy for a Monday Night Raw. And they were it was the first time they ever em- emulated from Italy. They were in Milan, and they start the show. And what we're going to watch is the debut of Santino Morello. And you'll see why I asked the question about being brought in from the stands. Uh, We're here on the dork side of the ring. We'll be right back. A quick break in the the discussion here. Thank you guys for checking out Continuous Sports, Dork Side of the Ring. You can continue for free by listening just like you are right now or going to Dork Side Ring on Instagram and Twitter. That's D O R K S I D E R I N G. Follow us, retweet, and share all the posts that we do. That'll help us greatly grow our footprint. Also, uh, you can continue to support us financially if you already do, or join those on the Patreon and become a, a member of the Llama Club uh, of the Greater Grum 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 Unity. Grum Grum Unity. That's right, Grum Community. Uh, you go to support.grum.tv where you can get your episodes early you can get exclusive content producer credit on 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 content it is good times also speaking permissions during my live stream also a little bit of a i want to start advertising this out uh may 12th on at 8 p.m on twitch.tv slash boomdaba that's b-o-o-m-d-a-b-a-h boomdaba who is a guest previously and will be very shortly uh, we are going to be uh, doing some fun stuff and trying to raise money for St. Jude's. We've talked about this with uh, with Metric Second and and MD as well as I'm 
sure we're going to talk about it with others um, over the course of the next week or two. Uh, but yes, we've got the good, uh, good, good folks, good content creators raising money for St. Jude's. Uh, St. Jude Hospital, Children's Hospital helps children and their families deal with uh, the, the, the fight that is against cancer. Every dollar raised goes straight to St. Jude to help families and children with, with the children who are suffering um, get treatment and given amenities that, not, you know, that only have to cost them a uh, So go check that out. That, we'll be doing that May 12th, 8 p.m. on Boom to Boz. Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash boom to bop. Now, back to the show. You're a champion, Santino Morella. And they're like, yeah. So. Uh, we're back. And his, and his bloodline. Yes, yes. Uh, back here on the dork side of the ring, uh, we just got done watching Santino Morella's debut on, uh, on WWE television. Uh, now, mind you, um, actually, I want to get your your first impressions of of the um, of, of what you saw. So we'll start with you, CJ. Vince McMahon is a sick man. He's he's not a well man. <laughs> that he's got that was that was a show that was entertaining. That was that was. I didn't know where it was going to go half the time, mm. but it kept going on. And I very much enjoyed it. That's my initial thoughts right now. Okay. I'll have to get my thoughts together in a second. But. That's, good. That's good. First impressions is good. Vince McMahon is an evil man. Uh, <laughs> Corn, what about Corn? What about you? Yeah, that was that was a good time. Bobby Lashley is huge. <laughs> oh, massive dude. Large, like, large. I mean, they, they pulled out. They pulled out Santino. Santino was a big guy. Like, yeah. He was mm. stacked. Uh, looking at him compared to Bobby Lashley, Bobby Lashley is absolutely a mountain of a man. He's enormous. Like he's still that. He's still that old. Like just incredible shape. Like we I, we've talked about it on this podcast before with guests, but like Bobby Lashley is forty five years old today, right? He is huh? forty. Bobby Lashley is 45 years old today. Wow. Like his age, that was 15 years ago. That was him when he was 30. Here's a picture of what he looks like today. Like he is, damn. he is a, an, an enormous human being. Bro, fuck the, oh, method. What is he on? <laughs> like just it, like, He's a massive human being, and like him in two thousand, like this is him in two thousand six, and he's just not like or what we saw was two thousand seven. So the same idea, like he, it's not like he didn't get like you know sometimes like big wrestlers like Randy Orton's like that now. Where in two thousand five, two thousand six, he was yoked, he was on like he was like on steroids, and now he's much more slender and toned. Yeah, Bobby Lashley is not. He's just. Always been like this. <laughs> he finds more ways, more muscles to define while also staying fucking enormous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's why, like, I, you know, it's like this man is superhuman, and he is e- like incredible. Um, you get that old man strength. I mean, he got dad strength, old man strength, genetic strength. Like, <laughs> like he's strong. Oh, he's strong. S K R O N G. Strong. Yeah. Yeah. He's he is a he is a large and impressive human being, um, and he got there's a, there's a oh man if I can find this picture there's a picture of his family and his his kids get roasted all the time unfairly, but he also has an interesting sense of like personal fashion. Um, here's him at the Hall of Fame a couple years ago with his family. Look at that hat he's wearing. It's the worst hat we've seen today. We saw Vince McMahon wearing a fedora. That's uh, straight up. That's uh, he took that out of his kid's Monopoly game. Uh, put that on his head. He stole that hat right off of Ebenezer Scrooge's head. Oh my goodness! <laughs> now that was that was then. That was a couple years ago. Uh, here's like um, 
less than a year ago, probably this that's him now. He's like now he's dressing, dressing. Okay, can oh, we go back to the first picture really quick? I have I have a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, the lady standing next to him is that his wife or to his to to the right of him? Y- yes. Yeah, the lady I, who's not holding the phone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe so. Yes. Okay. And um, those are their children. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me make sure. Um, he's he's had uh, two wives. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. He used to be married to Crystal Marshall, who was a WWE diva. Uh, and then they got divorced and he stated, and then that's when he, he, he found his second, uh, his current wife. Um, doesn't seem to be any pictures of them together. Um, but, uh, she, yeah, like, um, I believe that it is, if not, it might be a nanny. Um, but. Yeah, uh, yeah, but it's those nice are all blended family. All of his kids. Yep. No. Uh, oh, <laughs> those are all his kids. All of his kids. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well. Okay. Okay. Um, I think. I think sure. the, the two. I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah, we, we don't have to. I've said that's the question. The, the, like, oh. the kid in front of him is definitely his kid. That is absolutely without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, it's his kid. Um, you can tell by the hits. That's his kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why. <laughs> to... Yeah. So the. Uh, it's just, it's just like the transformation that that he's gone through. Not just like, I mean, obviously not a body body transformation, but like he came back to to WWE in two thousand and eighteen, I think. Mm-hmm. And they were like, you know, what do we do with him? Because like he's really good. He's he's a big dude, and he can't really talk. So they kind of like stick him with somebody who can talk. And it used oh? to be used to be like Leo Rush. Bobby Lashley on the microphone is very hit, very hit or miss. Of <laughs> mainly, he's got what Brock Lesnar has, right? Brock Lesnar's voice doesn't naturally match his physique. Mm-hmm. You would think he'd have this <laughs> deeper voice, but Brock just sounds like a, a farm boy from from Minnesota because he is a farm boy from Minnesota. Uh, from uh. North, so like he's got that he's got that to him. Uh, and then when he starts yelling at people, his voice cracks. Because he doesn't have a deep voice, Bobby uh, has a similar, so. you know, similar kind of um, vocal styling to him. Where it's like when he talks, you go, "Wait, that's his voice." And Is it like, the Clark Kent voice coming out of Superman's body syndrome? Kind of, yeah, kind of. Um, <laughs> he's had times where like he'll talk. Like there will be times where he's like, "No, nah, I'm gonna fuck you up," and you're like, oh, "Okay, yeah, no, I get that now." Okay, <laughs> say no. I like the physical intimidation. Mm-mm, okay. <laughs> That man said he's going to hurt me. I don't, mm -mm, nope, I believe him. But like, WWE likes to have guys in storylines and in conversations and and in front of the crowd. And he just didn't do very, he didn't do bad at it, but it just wasn't fitting of where, you know, he probably should be. So they got a guy like Leo Rush, who was a five, you know, seven cruiserweight who could really talk. And they're like, yeah, he's just going to be the guy, he's going to be the mouthpiece. And he's going to, he's going to get himself in trouble and Bobby's going to clean up his mess. No problem. Um, and then they were like, Oh, let's try this with Bobby. Let's try this. They put him with a white woman. Um, for whatever, for what reason, I don't know. Um, (laughs) (laughs) and then after that, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, MVP had made his return and at the Royal rumble and as a fixture on television. And he basically was like, Bobby, man, like, let's get serious. Like, look oh. at you. <laughs> very, um, very Koofy hours. Uh, and oh. there's like, there, there's memes, there's, there's memes and photoshops of both of them. With, like, I've made some for Jim Jam, where it's, where it's MVP with the Hurt business around him. And he's like, can you put, can you put Koofies in the eyes on him? I said, yeah, I can put them on all of them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like, just photoshops. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bobby Lashley large human being um and um i'm glad to see he's doing well for himself uh, 15 years after he helped santino morello debut now obviously if it wasn't obvious santino morello not actually a fan um yeah absolutely though did a very good job of convincing a uh 15 year old me uh that he was a was a fan um just your average every or everyday guy. <laughs> that was like 
It's like, uh, yeah, he's got tattoos. Like I, you know, he's okay. He's big. Like yeah. wow, because like you know, wow, he didn't like he didn't wrestle like a uh, like oh he's not an actual. Uh, just like oh he's an actual wrestler. Damn, that sucks. But also, uh, he had I think at one point he had one of the longest reigns as Intercontinental Champion. Um, really? Mm-hmm. Uh, Santino Morella. His name's Anthony Carelli. He's from uh, from Canada. He was born in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Um, oh, huh. let's see. He the held more you know, man. Championships. You gonna tell me how long he? He's also zero and one in MMA. Um, oh, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, y'all hit me. Huh? Everybody's got to try one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I want to see where when it when he like held it. Um. You think it'd go the other way? Yeah. yeah. MMA to, uh, WWE, but okay. Oh, no, no, no. He went MMA to WWE. He, he wrestled in 2004. He oh, faced... okay. I thought he did this afterwards. <laughs> no, 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 no. He got knocked out in 26 seconds. Uh, yeah, I'd play hey. too. <laughs> yeah. It's like, um, hey, you know, this is not for me, but that's okay. No, no. <laughs> no. Um, I want to say, I guess I got to look at him, like, how long... Because they, they have like longest reigns, and he's got one of the longest reigns um, of all time. Is Intercontinental? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it is. He was doing it where he was tracking it, where he's like, I am X amount of days away from. I've been doing I've been holding it for this amount of days. Um, and, okay, hold on. 2006. So Santino wasn't a one and done. Shout so out. He had, so he had the title for 77 days. And then he would have it for 85 days. And Ooh. he was like, he, like at the time, like that was kind of long. Like there was occasional guys who would have a hundred and some odd days, but like s- multiple months of having it was, uh, he, he had in a whole angle where he was going to chase, um, he was going to chase the, uh, uh, the honky talk man who has, I think still does have the longest intercontinental title reign of all time. Um, I look at it and make sure that's the case. Uh, 454 days he held the title, the intercontinental title, and I don't think anybody is the closest was somebody for 201 days, and then that was oh, doubled him up. Yeah, like that's the thing is the next longest is 200, 200, uh, there's 236 days. Um, I think is the second longest. Well, no, actually, the second longest is the one that he broke at. Uh, 414. Randy Savage had it for 414 days. Um, but yeah, it's just like he, they made a big deal of him, like holding the title, and he's like, "Yes, I'm gonna be." I, and like he had like a graphic where it was the honky tonk meter, <laughs> and it's like 414 days, and it's like Santino Morello's 12. He's like, "I'm well on my way." <laughs> um, yes, yeah, he he would go on to wrestle for WWE for. About eight years, I believe. Um, let's see, when did he get released? Uh, 2016. So, yeah, eight, about eight years. Um, he would often... He got over as uh, he would... He, so, you know how Mick Foley had, like, the, the mandible claw and the Sako? He would give yeah. a... Co- he would do a cobra. So, basically, okay. he would take his hand and he would make it into, like, a snake and then he'd jab you in the forehead. Hell yeah. And obviously, oh, <laughs> people would be like, "Boo!" Like people would not like, "What the fuck was that?" But then eventually, it became like his actual finisher. Um, and he would he had a snake, like a snake sleeve, so he, that would actually that they would sell obviously for merch, and mm-hmm. he would put it on so it would look like a cobra. Um, and uh, that it got over to the point where like uh, in two thousand and ten, uh, maybe two thousand fifteen. Um, he got into, um, he got into the, uh, elimination chamber match, I think, or maybe it was a couple of years before that. Um, and he got in there and people were rooting for him to win. Like he was the most comedy wrestler of like the last 20 years. And they're like, yeah, win, 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 win. And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> this guy is like, we're, we want this man to win. They, At, he had to. Uh... You should have uh, painted his, gotten some like venom nail polish, like the warden from Holt. <laughs> <laughs> well, say, hey, this is this Do is the our cobra, champ. Smack him in the face, scratch him, and 
now you're now you got snake venom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was just like what uh it was uh twenty two thousand eleven. Uh that's when it was. Yeah. So that, yeah, so two thousand eleven. Um people wanted him to win. And uh he didn't obviously, but uh I mean people were just buying into him winning, which is saying something when you're like a comedy, you know comedy act it'd be like oh you know like you know watching the the the, the lakers win the title this year like that that's... <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah yeah they they both are equally as comedy um so i but, got a cinderella run right so uh, a couple a couple questions uh based off of what we watched um mm-hmm. it did vince mcmahon uh create the what are those do we have to credit vince mcmahon with what are those not happy about it, but possibly. I mean, he did yeah, go I'm... in on those shoes. He said what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. He said it like ten years before. He didn't. He didn't have the ex- the exact what are those, but what he, the hell are he that? He did. I mean the the sentiment behind the statement was there. That was mm-hmm. that was the first documented what are those that I've seen. Yeah, I know. Like maybe the inflection was there too. Mm-hmm. Yep. The inflection was there. He threw in some extra words, obviously, so that doesn't help his case. But mm-hmm. um, you know, what the hell are those? Is 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 you know maybe we do need to give Vince McMahon some credit. He was ahead of the. You yeah. Know, he's people talk about how he's out of touch. Maybe he's so out of he maybe he's out of touch because he's so far ahead. You know. Yeah. Uh, Twenty years ahead of the game. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I guess. He, I guess. he knew he knew that people were going to be saying what are those and he didn't want to seem like he was setting the trend you know so yeah 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 uh, could you just imagine vince mcmahon just at a barber shop <laughs> and just roasting people as they walk in like he's one of the old like the like coming to america he's the old guy it's just like <laughs> really like oh like just vince mcmahon and but it's vince mcmahon doing it and you're like all I'm saying is, if I see Vince McMahon in a barbershop, I'm at the wrong barbershop. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. what, if he's, what if he shows up at your barbershop, the one you always go to? And he's and just he's there. Lost. <laughs> he's lost. Are you now? <laughs> I think Vince McMahon would just ironically own every getting uh, getting roasted. Like, I think he would just oh. go there and be like, "Ah, yeah, I love it. Makes me feel alive. You know, makes me feel yeah. like one of the people." Yeah. I feel like well, Vince McMahon. I'm, I'm used to crowd also, booing me my entire life. <laughs> man, would probably also be the barber's best friend. They, I feel like Vince McMahon and the barber are, <laughs> are on the same wavelength. <laughs> oh, you got one of those barbers who's just like, man, you cut great hair, but do not talk to me, <laughs> bro, buddy, buddy. Yeah, if it's like two of us in the shop, and I'm the only one he talks to, it's like, oh man, ah. I want somebody else. Somebody, please. Not my current barber, but one of my past ones. I was just like, gotcha. oh. I think the worst where you're just like, I like. I finally have somebody who does my hair that like I enjoy talking to, but it's it's just like it took twenty five years to find a bar find somebody to do my hair. Like I'm ca- I'm counting when I was a kid, all right. But like from sixteen on, ten years to find somebody who I didn't mind having a conversation to as they cut my hair. Like or am I just <laughs> just cut my fucking hair? Like I, yeah, I don't, don't need a conversation. The relationship between man and barber is is a special one. Yeah, yeah. See, I I I have done like I didn't like go, like I've gone to barber shops. I just didn't, I you know, uh, I for whatever reason just didn't like the way my hair was getting cut. So I ended up going like I go to I have a salonist, a hairstylist. I'm I, I'm like that. Ooh. I'm high end. I'm fancy. Um, yes, sir. But she he does gets to teach. He gets a tea tree shampoo after he's done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah, makes my hair feel, makes my yeah. scalp all tingly, baby. Got that Lavender, scalp baby. Massage. Yeah, my girl loves it, so that's all that matters. Um, hey, there you go. There yeah, you go. so, but, <laughs> but like, yeah, like you know the, I it was uh, the journey finding somebody to that you trust with your hair and to like that you can tolerate because I feel like those are the two things that are very important. Uh, yep. Like, but I I do I think I think it was a fireside a, uh, a couple of months ago, obviously, but maybe in the summer where it was just like we were talking about like the difference of like I think Tyler goes all right, white people, this ain't conversation for you, 
but and it was like and and the, and, I, and like I'm like what what what's the conversation? And he's and then he talks about like you know, have you ever gone to your barber that you just hate as a person, but they cut the hell out of your hair? And I'm like, oh yeah, I, I, this ain't conversations not for me. I'm just. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh he wasn't lying, you know. Uh, which is always it was always funny when when you know because the firesides I felt like um, Tyler felt more comfortable in because mm-hmm. it's just like not a bunch of 17 year old white kids yelling when are you going back to barstool yeah (laughs) Yeah. when he very clearly was like i'm not going back to barstool no (laughs) yeah it was pretty cut and dried yeah um it's still wild that they did that like like, so long um like what the fuck like (laughs) i i explained to people why i why i support like they're like you know oh you're really you're really involved in like that one discord why i'm like oh because there's a whole bunch of people that like we all unanimously hate barstool for many reasons but he he gave us a reason to like support him or he gave us a way to support him without supporting barstool so yes you know like yep. that's a big plus <laughs> but yeah I, it's just why they said they said now it's gonna get extremely real and didn't didn't tell that anybody was... <sighs> Something on top of <laughs> to find on the timeline. I'll put it that way. That like that day, I'm like, yeah, because I think I forget who else. Who uh, I was following somebody, and I saw it before I saw Tyler tweet about it, and I'm like, yo, I don't think Tyler's gonna like that. No, <laughs> and he did not. And I'm like, all right, wow. I'm like, well, there goes the trivia show because I really enjoyed <laughs> the trivia show on the series, mm. <laughs> and then you know. There it went. I'm like, God damn, man. Like, talk about just fucking not giving a damn. Um, but enough about Barstool. Um, we'll talk about WB, who's equally as evil. Um, but <laughs> Vince McMahon, uh, the fedora that he was wearing to cover up being bald. It was a choice. I, I mean, look, he would later wear a do-rag. So... <laughs> Um, I it, was, think, it was the lesser of two evils. Yeah, it's the lesser of two evils. He, <laughs> lo- he looked, and it didn't, and he wore the same one. Like, he wore the same black yeah. one. He never got one that uh, was a different, uh, different color to match his suit. Not that he cared, because nobody cared about the suits back then. No, um, that was apparent by any picture of, of a suit prior to 2012. <laughs> Jonathan Coachman comes out and he's got his arm like bent to <laughs> with a microphone and his arm he, the sleeve of his arm has more wrinkles in it than like this... your old t-shirt that's been balled up in the in your <laughs> closet for 5 years like it was so wrinkly listen man tailors across the country and across the world were destitute they were just <laughs> poor because no one was coming in for anything like no one was getting their suits tailored and it was nope. bad time for Taylor's, and then the turn of the decade came, and they it just reemerged better. like Phoenix, like Phoenix from the ashes. Yeah, we had to we had to go through the phase of wearing backpacks and and uh, lensless lensless glasses, uh, but we did get back to wearing suits that um, you know fit properly. Everybody, this is just a pair of IMAX glasses. He took the lenses out and just wear. Why did why did I? I <laughs> yeah, you did it too. Put tape uh, over them to color them. Oh, <laughs> I had a I, I had a friend who did that, and he, you know, he would wear the the pastel button downs, buttoned all the way to the top of his neck, and backpack tight jeans. Oh, but he went and got he got white glasses, put black mm-hmm. like hockey tape around the center, and then use like you know like purple and pink. Uh, Sharpie to yeah. like make a custom. So he's like, yeah, nobody else got this. And then like he found out that somebody else was. He's like, it was one of those things. Like, oh damn, that's where this design you know came from. Like he's like, I got this idea. It came to me one day. And it's like he's looking. He's like, oh shit. Uh, it LeBron's just... LeBron's wearing the same. Oh okay. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Oh, really? yeah. It just came to you, buddy. It came to you. Yeah. Oh, well, and we all <laughs> believed him, right? But like, because he, because he was. He's, I'm like, no, you definitely saw this somewhere. No, 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 no. I. It came to me, man. I came to. Okay, all right. And then we're all watching the same thing, and we see the design, and he goes, "That's where I saw it." 
Damn. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, I just woke up today and decided, you know, I went to barbershop and told him, hey, bro, can you put a heart in my hair? And he did it. <laughs> like, next thing you know, I turn around, everyone else is doing it. I don't know. <laughs> I, was, I, didn't, I didn't see anybody do it before I got in there, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't, what do you, Drake? Certified lover boy? No, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Nah. Aubrey got that from me. I've been doing this since 2021. <laughs> yeah. Drake's got a heck of a street team. He's out there. He's <laughs> he's looking at all the trends, seeing all the all the new styles coming out. He's the first one on them. Wouldn't yeah, that be OBO some shit, though? Industrial complex. Like, as a joke, that's very... Wouldn't that... Just imagine if that was for real for the slightest... Like, the slightest bit real. Where, like, he's got somebody... He's got sleeper agents in all the major cities. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I what don't are the it. kids oh. dressing like? What are the, what are the Listen, kids dressing like? I stay ahead. The OVO Industrial Complex is a hard-working business, so I don't doubt it at all. <laughs> Who's working harder, Drake or Vince McMahon? Possibly the only one who works harder would be Chris Jenner. But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i mean like there, vince did a uh interview with pat mcafee um a little bit oh. ago oh yay <laughs> and it was good because it's it's you know pat mcafee is not going to be asking hard it and questions um mm-hmm. but you know he he does have a way of making his guests like drop the sometimes for the worse drop <laughs> drop their guard a little bit get comfortable yeah. uh looking mm-hmm. at you q and on rogers um but <laughs> Yeah, it's just just two dudes, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, so like Vince is talking, and obviously you you know he's talking about Pat talks about like he's like you know you started this and you never left like the the further south you would go would be Philadelphia and Baltimore and Washington and now you're going to like Saudi Arabia. How cool is that? And Vince is like, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's a great business, uh, you know. Thing he goes, they got customs, you know. They you got to respect their ways, and I'm like. Yeah, well, honestly, it could have been worse. It could have he could have said he, he could have said, you know what? I kind of appreciate what they do over there, and uh, he just said he said what he said. And I'm like, okay, um, could have been worse. Could have been worse. But it's been <laughs> it's been noted historically, and and it was cool to hear it straight from the source. But like, he goes to sleep at like one in the morning and wakes up at like three in the morning. Like, he gets like two hours of sleep. Oh, he does not look like a man that gets a full eight. I'll tell you that. No, much. no. <laughs> <laughs> like he definitely does, that. and then he just works out, and then he goes. I, I, yeah, I don't doubt he doesn't get the two on some nights. <laughs> I, 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 nor do I. I, I guarantee you that there are nights where Vince McMahon settles for half an hour, where he's just like, he's I'll, just, re- I'll rest, I'll rest. Okay, time to go. To, you know, time to get up. Yeah, he just gets like cat naps throughout the day, <laughs> and it's wild. And like, re- oh, good. Uh, it's like it's just cat naps throughout the day, and then he just survives off of like rock star and bang. No, I don't put that in my body. No, no. Vince is weird. He'll put steroids in his body, but he won't put like other. Like apparently, he doesn't drink heavy. Never did. Um, or so he claims. Which, you know, with Vince McMahon, there's only so much you can believe that comes out of his out of his mouth for right mm-hmm. reasons. I mean, you should. His body believe, is a temple, Grum. <laughs> you shouldn't believe everything the devil tells you. Um, no. But it was. It's it. Like you hear stories about him. He's like, yeah, I went over to Vince's house, and there he was playing with his kids. Like a normal fucking person, and I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to react for thirty minutes. It's <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, that's right. This man is a father of two, a grandchild, a grandfather of like six. You know, um, like he he was really tight with his brothers growing up, and like, you know, I mean, the story goes that he was not close with his father at all, but like, it, kind of false because you know. He wants to paint the picture. He also doesn't see himself as like he sees himself as the common man because he grew up in a oh, trailer yeah. for like a couple years. But uh, it's just like, what? Like you're not though. Yes. You're a billionaire. The common man, man billionaire. Yes. Like I identify myself with with Stone Cold. Yeah, I root for Stone Cold. You you, you root for the money Stone Cold brings in for you. Yes. Yeah. Um. You said, yeah. oh man. You said that this he was is one of those guys. Me. Sorry, go for it. Yeah, it's, it's got me thinking, like, we say, like, hey, he was just playing with his kids, like a regular dude. It's like, it got me thinking, man, what is, what's fixing this man, like, during the fucking holidays, like Christmas and Thanksgiving? 
Is he There's, the one cutting the turkey? Well, no. Just enough like Santa for the grandkids. <laughs> he loved. I think the story goes he loved Thanksgiving. Did not, but like he would celebrate. They they would do. They used to do in the eighties and early nineties. They did Survivor Series on Thanksgiving, and mm-hmm. then you know Christmas they would run in New York. So he would be home, like they would every Christmas they would run Madison Square Garden. They still do to this day, um, provided it's not a pandemic. So they do like it's like I've heard stories of like, oh, you know, he he really likes he doesn't like the big eating holidays, but he does like the family aspect of him. And it's just mm-hmm. like who do, who likes the family? I like the big give me the food, man. Give me the food. That's a <laughs> yeah. like my you know family can come along, but Yeah. Uh... That's the price I pay for this food is <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh give me a plate say? and give me to the couch. What were you gonna say um, about Vince Aircorn? Well, I was I was just gonna say that uh, I don't have a lot of exposure to professional wrestling over the years, but what I have been exposed to it, a lot of it is the crazy Vince McMahon shit that he does. Mm-hmm. So, like in my mind, that's just him, like him as a person. Like that's just hundred <laughs> percent of the time that is what Vince McMahon is to me. And so, like hearing that he is like a normal family guy or like even has the capacity to to act as a normal family guy uh around the holidays or whatever you know that blows my mind yeah he just sells that role so well yeah he i mean he'll tell you he he said it a lot in the in the conversation with pat mcafee but he's like yeah i'm just like a regular guy you know i i i put my pants on just like you you know and and like sure but then you go and like check in on the demons that you are in control of, and um, you know make sure if anybody sold their soul to you, uh, then you go and do your day job. Like, mm-hmm. like I don't know. It's 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 very funny to see the disconnect of him to like the rest of the world. But also, he's like, while we're all talking about like, yeah, no, like billionaires are bad, and. This and that. Meanwhile, he's talking about, he's like, yeah, I'm glad we went public because it forced me to be less personable in my business decisions and made me more think about the bottom line. It's like, y- could you be any more out of touch? <laughs> like, yeah. Like you're... Let me think of people as numbers. That makes it easier for me to not care about them. Yeah, like like Pat McAfee asked about all the people he's cut in like the last year and a half to two years. Like, And Vince is just like, yeah, it's tough. He goes, it's uh, I, it's never easy, you know, to fire. It's never good. You don't want to tell somebody because a lot of people that's that they wanted to work here all their whole life, and you tell them they got to be fired. And Pat's like, yeah, he's like, so you do find it hard where it's like, you know, yeah, think about this. He goes, I used to, I used to, and then we went public. So I just think about, uh, you know, I just it helps me, you know, put business first. And it's like, <laughs> what? Like, how could you? How could you, in the same mind, say that you are just like the everyman? You're out here going, yeah. "I gotta make the, what's best decision for me," just like the everyman. And it's too wildly. Do- yes, you are in a, in essence that is what you are doing, and what is the everyman who's doing. But your best for your business and what's best for you uh, is different because yours is how can I just keep making more money, and the everyman is how can I not have my house repossessed. <laughs> <laughs> distinct differences between the two yeah while they both are the same they are different yes a lion and a house cat are the same thing except they're not it's just i think there was also um what else did pat talk to him about He was just like oh he asked about like hobbies which everybody knows vince doesn't have hobbies like vince he's like i can't afford to wrestling mm-hmm. 365 days a year uh we on the next thing you know this and that this and that and it's just like Pat, why are you asking about hobbies? You know the man doesn't do anything other than he works out. That's all he likes to do. He likes if he's not <laughs> if he's not creating quote unquote creating memories, he's working out. Like this is a man who saw the world's strongest man, Mark Henry, Olympian powerlifter, and said, "I could beat you in a in a weight <laughs> weightlifting <laughs> contest." And then proceeded. What? I was just keep going. I was I'll, saying, I'll hop in but, after. For with Mark Henry, he beat Mark Henry. Like Mark Henry gave up at two in the morning. They started at eight. Vince went until five in the morning. He oh, told geez. Mark he couldn't leave until he was done his workout. 
That's chaos. Like, that's the guy that, and that man was like, yeah, I love working for that guy. (laughs) Like, I I guess, man, he made you very fucking rich. I can understand liking working for that guy because he made you rich. But that is an unwell man. (laughs) <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is that is some that is somebody who if born after after therapy was destigmatized would be a different person entirely yes <laughs> or maybe not because he uh, maybe maybe he's never he'd never have changed what are you gonna say <laughs> we'll never know uh, i was gonna say wouldn't that be crazy if you like in that interview like what are you expecting when you ask if vince mcmahon has any hobbies like obviously you're expecting no this yeah. there's no there's no time but wouldn't that be crazy if he was just like yeah i'm i'm really into woodworking or I'm really into <laughs> dungeons and dragons like i i i fucking love it you know like some just love some it. like crazy inside peek into vince mcmahon's life that nobody knew existed y'all didn't know that vince mcmahon loves to build lego sets <laughs> <laughs> that would be the wildest one yeah he's into rector sets uh yeah, he's got the millennial falcon back there man. <laughs> I would not have been surprised if he had said he's big into war into World War Two memorabilia. Yeah, uh, I could see that. Definitely be like, wow, yeah, really. He's like, you know what? I got this. I got this German officer uh, badge at my house. It's uh, love it. I love it. Yeah, brother. Uh, it's like, so you have a Nazi badge? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's great Ooh, stuff. Ah, great shit. Yeah. Love history. I love, love history. history. <laughs> yeah, you're doomed to repeat it. You know. Ah. Um, but yeah, and it, it was funny because they did talk about like, for a moment they did talk about like the like mo- like the WWE storytelling in a modern day. And he did bring up he goes he's like when I took over from my dad, like nationalism was a big part about it. He goes that was Hulk's whole thing is eat your vitamins, say your prayers, God bless America, Hulk Hogan, Rrr. and <laughs> and all of his and, and you know. They got big off of fighting the Iron Sheik, Nikola Volkov, anybody you know, anybody who dared challenge America. And now it's like they're they're a global company, so they can't because they will undoubtedly like you know shun eighty five percent of their audience. Yeah, like they they have yeah. TV in India, in China. T- they had TV in Russia. Um, they pulled their TV in Russia. I mean, hell, as late as 2015, they had an entire angle where a guy from Bul- Bulgaria was the champion of Vladimir Putin. Was the champion of Vladimir Putin? It, it, no, it was not Vladimir. Elaborate. Like, it, it, so, so Rusev from Bulgaria, he comes in, he's this undefeated guy, and he just beat people the fuck up. Lot, he had his, his then-girlfriend in real life, uh, manager Lana, the ravishing Russian, and he was the Bulgarian brute, and that's the you know very basic you know character. Mm-hmm. He's just that was a fucking he beat the f- people the fuck up, and people were like, "Oh, this guy's great," but also boo because he's Bulgarian, and you know Lana would tell him to crush people, and she wore this pencil skirt, and she was in- yeah. re- very respectable, very respectable, and. Mm-hmm. She and like there, it started like going from like, okay, we've introduced this guy. All right, he's gonna win the United States championship. And while he does that, Lana talks about how he's the greatest champion America will ever see because he's not American, because no uh, American could match the the brute strength and the power of 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 you know the Bulgarian brute Rusev. And then they're like, okay, well, we're now going to include russia into this and vladimir putin and they had like this whole ceremony one day and i'm thinking about it i kind of want to add it to dork side stuff Uh, you know hopefully things go in a way that i can talk about this without it being an ongoing current topic but they like had their like you know he received a medal of honor from for his service from vladimir putin Oh, okay. Yeah, I understand now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The champion of Vladimir Putin. I got yes, it. Yeah, yeah. So he was Vladimir Putin's personal champion. Uh, yeah. To okay. the point where at WrestleMania 31, he would wrestle John Cena, who John Cena picked up the mantle from Hulk Hogan of being the guy and being very pro America, go troops, love the troops, America, mm-hmm. USA. And then he challenged Rusev. 
And Rusev came out to th- – they started playing the Russian National Anthem, and he, w- he came out on a tank. And, and like, he just comes out on a tank. I'm like, this is great. I don't care. He's going to win. You can't lose. you got a fucking tank. Worst come to worst, go get your tank and fire it at the ring. I don't give a <laughs> – like – yeah, you brought a tank without ammunition. You're a dummy. Uh, and then his and then his music fucking goes on, and his music is like this, just very in your face, like Bulgarian sounding, you know, hard hitting music. And it's like, yeah, nah, he's ridiculous. He waves. He wa- He would wave the Russian flag like he's cutting through like the thickest jungle vines. It's just it. It is an absolute treasure to look at. I'll send you guys a link of it. But it's like the whole thing is incredible to watch. Uh, and then Rusev would come out later, a couple years later, and go, "Yeah, me, 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 and my girlfriend fucked in that in the tank before WrestleMania." <laughs> <laughs> like they're like, it was hey. sneak, like, and it's like, I don't blame you, brother. I would do this. When, when are you ever yeah. gonna be able to do that? You know, given given a tank, <laughs> I have control of a tank for an hour and a half. Yep. There's certain things you gotta cross off the bucket list. Like yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta fuck your girlfriend or your significant other in in, in the uh, in that tank that has to be on there, even if they're not there. Yeah, um, man. It, you gotta consummate the love somehow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't. You can't. Oh. I mean, that's that's a that, you know. But then again, you can only do that with somebody you're going to, you know, you're gonna be with for the rest of your life. That's true. Like, ex- <laughs> try to explain that. To, like, yeah. It's like, oh, like, so, um, like, you know, you're going on a date after your breakup and you're, you got to get over and like, oh, you know, like, oh, I'm just getting over my ex. I understand that. I'm like, I don't think, I don't think you do. We fucked in a, we fucked in a tank. <laughs> and she, you're watching, and I, and I, <laughs> that's real love. You're watching, real you're, love. Watching, to tell you. you're watching Dunkirk with your, uh, with your <laughs> girlfriend and you have to turn it off because you can't see it. You can't yeah. see a tank without crying. <laughs> watching fury and you're just like <sighs> and she's like what, what's going on nothing just, nothing. just reminds me of laura <laughs> <laughs> everything reminds me of her <laughs> how does this movie remind you of her we fucked in the tank <laughs> we fucked in the tank sitting there As... with the like the joker with the cigarette <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i feel like if i was if i was talking to if i was in a relationship uh if I, like with my girlfriend, and she would be like, "Yeah, uh, I gotta tell you something. I had sex in a tank with my ex boyfriend. I I don't know. If, I I don't know. I'd have to go find a tank. I'd have to go find a tank so I can fuck her better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Be like, no, no, no. Yeah. Like, I'm not letting this man have that you over me. Repl- like, you gotta replace like, memories. You ever you see gotta like, do it on a, like it's do like it on a submarine? Exactly. Yeah, we are, we're doing it on a submarine. Yeah, <laughs> it's in the water too. Um, yeah. Space shuttle. Yeah, yeah, it's like we got, we got, we're going back to the Kennedy Space Center. We're fucking on, we're fucking on the Atlantic, the, the Atlantis. Uh, this is like, like the idea of like, uh, you're like, yeah, I can't compete with that. Is a is a loser mindset. You've already lost. It's like you're, yeah. you've already lost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're like, no, no, I can't have because if you ever come across if, like, I Rusev and Lana are still together, but the, who if they were not together and the next person that was with them, knowing. That they had sex with each other in a tank. That man holds that over you whenever he sees you. Like if he ever sees you in public, he's just like, "Oh yeah, you know me and her. Sure, we didn't end up together, and you're with her. You married, great kids. That's great. I fucked her in a tank though. So <laughs> I always have that. I'll I always win. have that. Yeah, I win. <laughs> like my, we had. We. I don't care if your child is gonna. Congratulations. Great for your child to win the Nobel Peace Prize for finding the cure to cancer. I still fucked your wife in a tank, bud. Um, Hang on one sec, one sec. Boo! <laughs> Coach K popped up on my TV, so. I'm oh, yeah, that's all good. That's oh. all good. I'm, I'm, we're all rooting for the downfall of um, of, of Coach K. Um, as soon I, as, hopefully the pack can go up uh, tonight. That would be great. Hopefully. Because if I got to wait until the final four, I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to start sweating. <laughs> Be devastated. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm. I've. I've lost against them. If that's the case, I'm gonna bet on them on s- next Saturday. Because then the Jinxon. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If they make it. Uh, <laughs> yep. Also, I do hedge need to. Your pre- bets. Yeah, I gotta hedge my bets. Uh, win, I win, yeah. win. Either they they lose and I win, or yep. uh, they win and I make money off of it. 
but yeah, uh, yeah. I do need to pre- I, hey also uh, uh sidebar thank you for the referral code uh CJ cuz uh you know I appreciate uh the the money that yeah, came yeah. as a result of doing that um oh yeah I I want us all to eat brother I want us oh, all Oh yeah to eat. hell yeah hell yeah um I haven't I haven't won anything since last weekend uh, but I'm hoping to change that today. I just like, all right, cool. I won 70 bucks. I'll just bet $10 a day. You know, do it. Fucking. How did, uh, how did that parlay go out for you? The uh, first weekend of March Madness ground. So I did, I got all the way, I got to Murray State, St. Peter's. Mm-hmm. Every, I, I, hit, I hit on all the other ones. I'm like, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Come here. Come, come here, Murray State. I need you to win. I need you, because it was afterwards, it was Arkansas. To win and Gonzaga to win over Memphis. Yep. I'm like, this is good. I like those two odds. I like you're the only one that might fuck this up because you know you're you're a 15 C is gonna get into your head. Uh, and <laughs> and then I'm watching it, and at halftime they were down, and I'm like, okay, and I could have cashed out at like 236 dollars. I'm like, I'll wait. I'll get, I'm gonna give it to like the third, the the second half, the you know, last 10 minutes, and I'll do it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, all right. And I'm just watching the money cash out go like, you know, 230, 200, 110, 170. Uh, I'm like, okay. I'm like, all right, okay, all right. Well, we're back at 180. And then Murray State misses a three. St. Peter's hits a three. Murray State misses a layup. Murray State hits another, or St. Peter's hits a three and they're up by eight. And I'm like, <laughs> let me cash out. So I cash, yeah. out, I cash out at 70. Immediately following that, they go on a run, and they get it back. They get it back tied, and I'm like, "These oh. cocksuckers! They're gonna fucking <laughs> be. They're gonna fucking ruin this. They're gonna. Be, I shouldn't have cashed out. I should have just t- fucking did it." But I, Max, Max had the uh, the right thing. He's like, "If you don't cash out, you're not in it for the money." And I'm like, "Good point. I'm very there much in it for the money." You know? Yeah. Yep. I did the same shit, bro. My it was a couple nights ago. The last leg for me was Duke. Mm. And they, uh, I forgot who they're playing. Yeah, whoever they were playing, they were like, they were down. Like they lost, they missed like eleven of the last twelve shots going into the half. I'm like, fuck this. I'm cashing out and going to bed. <laughs> Wake up the next morning. They fucking came back and won. It's like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> I could have, could have, could have let it go. You know, just yeah. Let it yeah, but it's like I um, I put like I got Nova today and I got Arkansas, so. Um, mm. I'm 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 hoping they're both not got, favored. So money line or Nova or money line, seven money line. Oh no no it. sorry sorry I have I have Nova I have Nova plus two and a half Arkansas plus four and I also have Nova money line and Arkansas money line because they couldn't okay. like, they wouldn't let me put it on I couldn't do a four leg parlay I'm like this I'm like I get it but this is bullshit. Oh, you want to do the money line and the spread in the parlay together? Yeah, it was, wasn't let me. So I was like, uh, right. yeah, they won't like, let you do that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, okay, and I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to fuck with the over unders. It's college. It could be, oh, it man. could be an listen, 80, 80 to seventy five yeah. or a forty to forty three. Like, listen, yeah, half the time it's like more than like ninety percent of the time it's going to be under. <laughs> oh, I know. I bet I, I I did a separate bet the other night, uh, or the other last week on Sunday. I did another eight leg parlay, which didn't hit because Michigan State fucked it up for me. Um, <sighs> but I did. I took like three three unders and an over. I was like, "This is the over game. Like this is too low. This got to be over." And I forget what it was. All of them were under, and I'm like, "Man, what the fuck?" <laughs> like, yeah. I, uh, like I, I'm like, yeah. I should have just gone for the under. And then um, the other night, I did. I'm pissed. Uh, Nikola Jokic is not my MVP for multiple reasons, but now that uh, I'm out, but now that I'm ooh. betting and he's getting involved in my bets, uh, I had uh, when they faced the Suns, I took um, and, and I'm sure people are loving this that don't bet. I took Suns money line, Suns plus one and a half. Chris Paul over six. It was Chris Paul's first game back. Six and a, over six and a half assists. Booker over twenty six and a half. He had forty nine, and I took Jokic's assists over eight and a half, and I'm like. Fuck you, pal. <laughs> this guy. Because I was going to do his under on his points, but I was glad I didn't do that because he had like 29, I think, and he had, his over under was 26. And gambling, by the way, bad. If you have a gambling addiction, call 1 800 gambling. Yes. Or, yeah, I think. Yeah, or just Google gambling addiction yeah. help. 
I'm not addicted. I only do ten dollars a day for now, and then when I don't have any oh, money, yeah. then I won't do it. Exactly. We're yeah. in it for the vibes. Yeah, it's just vibes. I. I may, you, you know, uh, may or may not uh, have gambled before. Mm. Um, I don't have anything right now. Living on student loans uh, in grad school isn't exactly um, conducive to a gambling lifestyle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> learned, learned a few hard lessons that way. Um, but right now, I'm just I'm really enjoying what we got going on in the NBA. Uh, I'm enjoying my Timberwolves. Uh, it's nice to have meaningful yeah. basketball in March to watch. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of what I've what I've been doing. Nice. Now, I'm rooting for your your Timberwolves, um, mainly yeah. because they if they get in the play out of the play in, uh, it is likely that Denver goes in the play in, and then mm-hmm. uh, then my narrative that Jokic shouldn't be the MVP. Um, is is strong because it does help your narrative you know he's not even he mm-hmm. can't get out of playing so he's what what mvp is he um so yeah <laughs> that's the uh that that's we're on the same side for different reasons but we're on the same side also it is fun to watch cat and ant play basketball yes. not so not so oh, much it's... russell when he's with d'angelo russell when he's on is fun to watch but yes uh, when he's not yeah See, I've bit. uh I've really enjoyed D'Angelo Russell this year. I know like a lot of people outside of the Timberwolves fan base have don't appreciate him as much as I do, which is completely understandable. Um but he's actually improved uh his de- like his communicating on defense with the new kind of defensive system mm-hmm. that Chris Finch implemented this year. We're getting kind of into the weeds of basketball on a wrestling podcast now, but <laughs> it's uh, a bullshitting con- a bullshitting podcast yeah, now. I, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so I mean, like, there's a lot of change that has happened, that, and that I think a, a big reason that is how the Wolves are are playing this year, and they're playing meaningful basketball in March. Like, I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, mm. but yeah, I mean, it's definitely the cat show and. Uh, Anthony Edwards is also awesome to watch, uh, and I just love I just love having these fun young guys uh, in my city that I can watch play basketball. Hell yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It is fun. So it glad you fun. guys didn't blow it up like some people suggested you do. <clears throat> Ten yeah. games into the season, Pass. no names, no names. Cough, cough, cough. Bask, bask. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was coughing. My cough sound like I say the word bask. Um, yeah, very love you, bask. That shit was <laughs> that, that shit was funny when he was just like, "That's it, trade uh, Carl, trade Carl." And I'm like, I, "Excuse me, <laughs> like I know this is a hell of an overreaction, but if we're gonna do this, what are you trading him for?" He's like, "I don't know anything. Can anybody who can play defense?" Yeah. And now it's catch me second boy. team all, what a all dumb boy. <laughs> uh, how long? How long is it? This weekend where we get the tweet. Going quietly because I, t- I said about Pascal Siakam, but it's absolutely going to be like about Carl Anthony Towns getting MVP consideration. Like somebody's going to force oh, it, co- somebody's absolutely yeah. going to co- force Cat in there. Yeah, why isn't why isn't Fred Van Vliet in the MVP conversation? <laughs> it's like, come on, man! Like, oh. yeah, you can be playing good basketball and not be in the MVP conversation. Mm-hmm. It's like- it's Jokic and Bead and Giannis at this point. Really? Exactly. Yeah. Everybody else That's is just garnished. Race. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like wrestling, though. Like wrestling, a lot of people be like, "Oh, this guy's the best wrestler." It's like, no, this guy's the best wrestler. Or like, for example, this guy should be champion. And it's like, there's only one champion, or in, like, there's only mm-hmm. one champion per show in WWE. There's soon to be only one heavyweight, like one main champion. There's only like, there's a there's a there's a criteria that you have to hit. And while there's a lot of people who hit that criteria, some people set new criteria on the way as feel like they're like, no, 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 you're not on my level. You know, like Jokic, Embiid, uh, Giannis, they're on their own levels. You know, Mm -hmm. they don't have any peers. Roman Reigns doesn't have any peers. You know, in AEW for a while, Kenny Omega did not have any peers. Like there's, 
there's there's levels to it and a lot of times people don't want to it's not so much that they don't want to look objectively they just can't look at it objectively because their feelings are like you know i like i said this i I know that i said Jokic is not my mvp because my guy is joel Embiid, and he's just as much a contender but i can also go Jokic is very good at basketball and if Embiid had won a MVP last year, I would not be so mad that he didn't. He doesn't win one this year. Like it, once Embiid gets an MVP, uh, jo- Jokic can run away with it. I don't care. Like my guys will forever be an MVP. Like you can't take them away. But if we are going to take them away, like let's start with like a 2010, 2011 guy. Like that around that. Maybe that guy is kind of a fraud now. Without we're looking at it. You know, just, just maybe. maybe you said it. I, uh, um, thankfully, I don't think anybody who listens to this is a Bulls fan, so they won't be too mad. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a matter of like, I, like having having Cat is having Cat ter- take that leap into where he's mm-hmm. not like, oh, he's only offensively focused. Like, oh, he's actually not negative on defense. This is good. Yeah. You know, he's got guys around him now that help him look good and play good that don't yell at him and bully him. Um, yep. Also, it's a, it, just the story, like, you know, like he's had a rough fucking 18 months. And for him yeah. to basically be able to put himself into basketball and have it pay off is, is so – is just good. Like, it's, it's, a, it's good to see good things happen to good people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Rest in peace, Jackie Towns, mm-hmm. uh, and all of Carl's family that was yeah, impacted man. by COVID. That's Look, it was sh- so tough, and it was tough to be a fan to like watch it happen because you could see, like, especially of course, right after um, you. And we also had um, a lot of the George Floyd stuff happening in Minneapolis, so like it was a pretty sad time in Minneapolis and kind of around the Timberwolves organization uh for a period of time where it was it was tough because you could see all that pain and all that hurt with with carl specifically um and like yeah you could really feel that and you can feel it dip like you can feel that it's lighter this year like he's he's being able to get through some of that stuff he's handling himself um you know you can tell he just he's enjoying playing basketball and he's enjoying himself out there which is really cool to watch yeah, people enjoying themselves doing the thing that they love to do is is very like wrestlers. <clears throat> you can see that with the those who are like like Ronda Rousey. You can tell she doesn't enjoy herself. She's there to collect the paycheck. But like mm-hmm. Seth Rollins or Becky Lynch or Roman, bro. Roman nowadays is having the most fun that I've ever seen anybody have because he just gets to be an asshole and people are. And be manipulative, and he's just like lost in in the character. But you can tell that like he's just he's vibing, he's having a good time. So, same with Seth Rollins, like is just a you know ego maniacal cackling idiot who is having the time of his life. Like you know, and then when you see guys who aren't having a good time, and you know that, and they translates to TV, and then you're like, well, why aren't they on TV? It's like they're not having a good time, man. Like, and unlike. You know, basketball, if you're not having a good time, like, most times you still have to go out and play. And, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, the process Sixers, we're not having a lot of fun. I tell you that right now. I was having a lot of fun because I, was, I wasn't the one fucking getting my ass beaten every goddamn night. <laughs> yep. You know? <laughs> and when people, uh, people kept telling me, like, your team sucks. I'd be like, I know. Oh, I, that's yeah. the whole point of it, my guy. Like, you know, we, we, are, we are actively trying to suck, you know? But... Seeing guys like, you know, Isaiah Cannon and Hollis Thompson and Henry Sims and they're like fighting for their NBA careers. Yeah. And they and they're just getting ran the fuck off the court. But, you know, we got Jakar Sampson got some run. Jeremy Grant process alum. Rashawn Holmes, who hopefully uh is okay. I know he's going through some some stuff where he's like, I gotta I I, I can't play basketball for the rest of the year. I guess shit's rough, man. Mm-hmm. But, um, but just to know, I could never step on the court and and perform the levels that Santino Morella did. Now, if I did have somebody like if I had Joel Embiid like lifting me up to dunk, I could probably dunk. 
Yeah. I think I could. I believe in you, pal. Thank you. Thank you. Um I I th- I would I I would think that uh if uh if the Spurs had like grouped a circle around you to protect you and let you shoot <laughs> CJ, I think you'd be good. <laughs> Oh, and, like how that one Reddit post about Steph Curry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you could hit rim. I think you might be able to hit it, too. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. CJ, I think if um, – maybe not at the at the, at the the plate, but I'm sure somebody could hit the ball to you in the field and you could catch it and then uh, make a really good play on it. Mm-hmm. I think you could actually – you know, know, actually, you know, actually, Corn, I think you could actually hit the uh, – I think you could make contact with a pitch. <laughs> I oh, disagree. Man. I think you can put it in play. I, I don't. Yeah. I, th- I think you put it in play, pal. I think you could. I think you put it in play. I okay. got confidence in you. Yeah. I don't think you get you the. I, you absolutely get thrown out at first, without a doubt. But um, I think you can put it in play. Yeah. Just, I mean, as soon as they wind up, but, swing. <laughs> uh, Close that, your eyes those, and swing. Yeah. I mean, that's it's like that reminds me of a tweet the. The guy that said he could luck into a home run, Tyler, and Tyler was just talking about on his show <laughs> last week, I think. Like, just this the stupid blind confidence that some people have. Like, yeah, like I could luck into a home run probably in the major in the major leagues. It's like yeah, no, you really can't. Not. Yeah, no, I you, mean, I could. You can't. Well, you can't. I could. We're, I'm just built different. You know. Uh, uh, I'm a. Yeah. I've never played uh, organized baseball past fourth grade, but I could do it. Hmm. Yeah, no, I get that. You could luck into it, right? Like anything are you, could happen with a little are bit you, of luck. Are, are you, are you taking, if somebody comes at you with num, nunchucks, are you, you going to be able to beat them in a fight? I mean, if somebody's coming at, we, coming at me with nunchucks, they probably know how to use nunchucks. Yeah. So it would be... Uh, I'd be at a disadvantage okay. immediately if it's somebody that was just like handed a pair of nunchucks and like here go fight this guy with them. I could probably at least not get knocked <laughs> out by nunchucks. Yeah. I could figure something out. All right, all right. Well, you're you're uh, you're smarter than than some people. Uh, some people. Some people. <laughs> Sex Jason. That he would take somebody who. Who actually knew how to use nunchucks because they were a coward's weapon? Um, no, that shit's breaking your wrists, breaking <laughs> your arms. That shit fucking hurt. They're heavy as fuck. Yeah. Ah, uh, but as we wind down here, final thoughts as we leave. We'll start with you, TJ. Uh, final thoughts on the debut of Santino Morella winning the Intercontinental Title from Umaga in Milan, Italy. Um, now that I got more context behind the win. And the match and everything. I'd like to say that I'm I'm glad I got to witness history in the making, you know, of mm-hmm. Santiago of his uh of his reign that was coming as the Intercontinental Champion. So with that, glad to see that. Glad to see um, a little bit more of the evil Vince Vince McMahon that I don't really catch much of. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, I like to. Hopefully, I'm gonna try and like stay more aware of what's on the WWE world. It's, it's been happening a lot more ever since I joined the Discord, but now, you know, pretty interesting to see how everything's going on. So, yeah, that's my thoughts. Good time to be a wrestling fan. There's a lot of, a lot of yeah. good, a lot of variety, a lot of good things going on. It is yeah. always good. What about you, Corn? Final takeaways from, uh, from what we watched today? Um, final takeaways, yeah, like, uh, like CJ said, it was good to see a peek into the the labyrinth uh, that is the mind of Vince McMahon. Uh, <laughs> get a little peek behind the curtain. Get a little bit more exposure. Uh, big ups to Santino. Uh, he, like I said, as soon as that man got that full lion face tattooed on his back, uh, <laughs> he knew that he was going to be world champion. Someday of something. He didn't know what it was going to be, but he knew he was going to be world champion of something. So I, I really respect that out of him. Mm. Um, yeah, and like, like CJ said, I'm, I can't wait for the arrival of Gable Stevenson uh, to the WWE. And I will, uh, you know, I know he's listening to this. Hi, Gable. I love you. Um, 
And yeah, I'm excited to uh, experience his career with you, Grum. Yeah. It'll be, I, think he, I mean, I don't think he'll start the Monday after Mania. I think he might be there, mm-hmm. but um, I, I like, I don't know what he's been doing. He's definitely been training sp- specifically for, you know, wrestling the last three years. Uh, but they've been talking yeah. to him for a little bit. They signed him to an NIL, um, and you know, and he definitely wants to go to wrestling. He he's been at many events. He was at SummerSlam mm-hmm. last year. Uh, him and yep. uh, what's uh, the 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 women the female wrestler who won gold? Uh, they both attended, and they both were like, "Yeah, we're wrestling fans." And I was like, oh, "We're gonna get two! Like, let's go <laughs> two Olympic gold yeah. medals! Let's go!" Um, so that'll be. Uh, It'll be fun to see where their careers take them, uh, especially if they go to WWE, whatever they do. I mean, I can see Gable going into MMA, pulling a Brock Lesnar, being mm-hmm. like, "Let me go get, let me go, let me let me go fuck some people up for real. Let me go do that." So, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it'll be fun. It's always fun to see a high profile collegiate wrestler or collegiate athlete um, go into WWE, and with the expectations being pretty high and seeing them exceed them and, and pass them. Um, well, mm-hmm. we're, we're wrapping up here one more time. Uh, we're going to do in reverse order. We'll do start with you, Corn. Tell the people where they can find you uh, and anything you would like to plug, uh, causes, events, and whatnot. Ooh, shit. Okay. Uh, I'm on Twitter, at Zach Corneliuson. Um, causes. Let's... Uh, there's still a lot of stuff going on in minneapolis there's a lot of uh neighborhood aid a lot of um there's there's still sadly been more uh deaths at the hands of police since george floyd uh it's heartbreaking every time there's always people good people here uh with community aid organizations and um people out in the streets doing the work um i don't have any of those uh, off the top of my head right now, but you can you can look them up, no problem. Um, or give uh, help out in your community as well. Um, you don't have to specifically help uh, Minneapolis. You are affected by this somewhere else. So, uh, yeah. That's a good one. Good one. CJ, what about you? Where do people find you? What causes or events you'd like to plug? All right. Yeah, you guys, like I said earlier, you can find me on Twitter at CJ5299. Um, uh, earlier this week, we had a couple of storms up in in Louisiana and the Texas area, a couple of tornadoes. There's some people out there that are having a hard time right now. I don't have any on hand, but I know that there's some places you can donate to to help these people recover, you know, a little bit afterwards. Um. So, yeah, if you could try to help out there, that'd be good for all of us, honestly. And um, invest women, pay women. Yes. Yes. That's my my plug for today. Good plug. Great plugs all around. Thank you guys for coming on. I appreciate it. It was a blast having you and showing you, uh, as as Corn said, the labyrinth that is uh, Vince McMahon's head. Uh, hey, thanks absolutely. for having us, bud. Yes, yeah. it was, it was a great time on here. Hell Hopefully, yeah. it's not my last time. Absolutely not. You guys will be back. As uh, I, I don't think I've had a single guest that I would not have back in the future. Uh, great. And uh, I hope to never have that case. Um, yeah, because then that means I had a bad guest and I had a bad time. That'd be unfortunate. Guests. Yeah, very unfortunate. That'd be unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, but thank you guys for coming on. I love you guys. It was a great one. Now let's go watch and root for the downfall of Coach K. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Love you guys. Take it easy. Love you. Shout out Corn Man and CJ for being good, good guests. Go follow them on their socials and uh, being and just great pals, fantastic pals. Thank, thank you guys for joining me uh, and going over Santino Morella again. Corn Man with the astute observation about the lion tattoo being destined for greatness after you get an atrocity like that on your back. Um, but yeah, good times. Uh, I hope you had fun. I hope you had fun, uh, listener, listening to this and enjoyed the conversations we had, The enjoyed the, the banter that was had. Next week's episode, another good one with great friends. 
with such great friends that they're back again. That's right. It is the duo of Kareez and Jonner, Twitch.tv's Jonner1223 and Kareez. Uh, just Kareez. It's just Kareez on Twitch. Um, but you can uh, enjoy their previous episodes. Jonner's was the Viagra on the pole match. Kareez's was the Kiss Demon. But next week, we're talking, again, another... Uh, another, uh, another dastardly deed. Although this one does not, uh, it does not cross the line. I mean, it does in a, in a, in a, in a story. It, it's in, in a, in a sense of the what the villain does in the story crosses the line. However, it does not cross cross the line in terms of a storytelling device. But uh, we're talking boss man again. This time he's stealing the casket of Big Show's dead father. Right off of the funeral device. That's right. We're talking about Big Boss Man and Big Show's feud from 1999. It's a doozy. It's a good one. We're watching uh, Big Show crushing them, crushing uh, Prince Albert and Big Boss Man with a dumpster, and also uh, getting the uh, <laughs> the the funeral. And he pulls up and steals it right off the casket. So, uh, also, uh, we'll also watch the, we're going to end up watching the Survivor Series match where Big Show literally goes through three giant men and chases Big Boss Man uh, through the, uh, towards the back. Um, but, uh, that's next week's episode. Thank you guys so much for hanging out this week, for checking us out, listening on, uh, on Spotify or Apple, where you can leave a five-star review, or five-star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. Just go to the podcast store, leave a five-star review there and a review and that'll help us greatly you can also continue to follow us on twitter and on instagram at dorkside ring you can continue to support us or join us over at patreon uh go to support.grum.tv or just patreon.com slash grum and you can uh be a contributor in a sense of financial monies and backers of this content like this or my twitch stream or my youtube con content also uh i want to say i'm aiming to have the video podcast in full by june and i am hoping to have them on a youtube channel uh by june so look forward to that uh thank you guys so much for hanging out i love you i appreciate you thank you for joining me Remember, don't take wrestling seriously because wrestling is better when no one is taking it seriously. I am Grum. I'm thanking you once more for coming on the Dark Side of the Ring. And I will see you guys next week here on the Dark Side of the Ring podcast. <laughs>